Hello fellow stampers and crafters. This is Carol and Joan bringing you a video today on one of our favorite techniques. It's called a one sheet wonder and it involves you stamping your own designer paper. These are the cards that we ended up with today from our technique. So I can't wait to show you how to do it. Oh, and we have to see our beautiful envelopes, both the front and the back. All right, so can't wait to show you how to do this. Let's get started. Let me move these out of the way and bring in the products that we will be using. We will be using two stamp sets today. Delicate Dahlias. This is a celebration stamp set that is free currently during August and September if you order $50 worth from the, any, any catalog, you get this one free. And this is our forever favorite, Forever Fern, that is a must-have for leaves. Look, we even have mirror images. These and dots, okay? Two very important things. These are the two stamp sets we will be using. For my colors, I chose the Regals. Here are the colors. We have numbered ours so that we can find them. Rich Razzleberry, Pumpkin Pie, Blackberry Bliss, Cajun Craze, Old Olive, Crushed Curry, and Cherry Cobbler. So these are the colors that we will be using today for our beautiful creation. So let's get started. Okay, I have my stamps already mounted on the blocks. You will notice that the dahlia is photopolymer and these are uh, rubber, but that doesn't matter. It's still gonna be gorgeous no matter what. This dahlia stamp is a distinctive stamp. So it has a realistic photographic look as you stamp. So what we are going to do first is to stamp clumps of three dahlias. Now, you're co you would think we're going to put one here, one here, one here, one here. Not a good idea because if we break it down, we end up with the flowers in the middle. So we're going to start right here in the corner. And then I'm just going to re-stamp it again, light. And I'm going to stamp another one, full stamp. Okay, so there's my cluster of three for that corner. I'm going to do a cluster of three over here in this corner. Stamp once. Stamp off the second time. And then stamp again. There's a cluster there. Okay, then I'm going to put a cluster right here, sort of in the middle. Stamp once. Oh, forgot to stamp off. Oh, well. Stamp once. Stamp off. Okay, and that leaves me a nice, probably a partial cluster over here. There's one. I don't like stamping off. I will confess, I don't like stamping off after I stamp off the edge of the paper because look what happens. You get a dark spot where you were. So it's best to stamp off fully and then stamp onto the paper. Okay, now I see that we need a sum here, probably a very small section of three so we'll do those remember we do it again so we don't oh look at that one the nice thing about this stamp is that because it is photopolymer we can see hopefully ha, huh, where we were and rotate it around let's see how good I do while I'm on camera you know how that is all right that works pretty good and we're going to do one more. I don't like this right here in the center, so we're going to do one more dark to help cover that up a little bit. There we go. All right. All right. We have a white spot right here that I'm not real fond of, so that's no problem. We'll fill it in, and we'll have a lone dahlia right there. No problem. All right. That was done in pumpkin pie. Okay. Our next... Excuse me while I reach. Our next color 
is going to be rich razzleberry. No, no, let me don't go there. Let's go with the leaves next. Our next color will be the old olive. I'm going to do the leaves. Okay, so we take our leaves. Once again, this is out of the Delicate Dahlia stamp set. And it has two, let me grab the stamp again to show you. It has two sets. It has the solid one, and then it has the outline. We haven't even used the outline. Same with the leaves. We have a solid photographic looking one, and then we have outline. We are not using these outline ones today. We are only using these picture ones. Okay, so these are our leaves. So let's stamp our leaves, and we can stamp once, then we can stamp again. And sometimes, even three times. Two I like better than three, though. So let's put a leaf over here and fill up this area. Notice how I, the, I stamped off the edge of the paper, and it would have not been crooked, so we're not going to, or, or it would have been had a mark in it, so we're not going to use it. Okay, stamp once, and then again. Okay, stamp once, and then again. Making the leaves kind of extend out as though they're bigger. Stamp once, and then again. Notice how we're filling in the white areas, too. So we can tilt our paper around, and we can begin to fill in over here. Stamp once, and then again. I think this one needs one right here. So I'm going to do stamp once, and then again. Okay, turn it around. Stamp once, and then again. Got a rhythm going here, don't I? Stamp once, and then again. Seems to work pretty well. Stamp once, and then again. It's okay if we go over the dahlia. That doesn't matter at all. When we're done, it's going to be a collage looking um, piece of paper, so it will be okay to have that. Okay? See how I'm just filling in these areas right here? Looks pretty good like this, doesn't it? What do you think, Joan? Yeah. Let me go back over good. this. This one had a... Oh, yep, there we go. It's going to get even better, though. That's what's so much fun. I think I'll just do one there. Okay. Here, and then again. Stamp one off the edge here. Stamp one off the edge there. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Oh, I don't know. Wait, right down here. I think we need a leaf coming in there. And I think we need one leaf right there. Okay, I like it now. Now, let's go for our next one. Our next one is going to be this little flower here. And for it, we're going to use rich razzleberry some nice fall colors going on in this one and I'm going to stamp three flowers now I stamped off so I don't want to do it again stamp and then stamp off where I have holes so stamp stamped off so I don't want to do it again there's one and there fill that in okay here and then, because we didn't stamp off the paper, we can do it again. Here. See, I'm even stamping over the leaves, which is okay with me. Beginning to fill in all of these um, white areas. See, you're beginning to fill in your paper. It's going to be a background piece, so it doesn't matter that it isn't now I did I stamped off but I didn't move it at all I left it so that the same edge was hanging off oh there's there's the problem I wasn't paying attention there let me see if I can fix this one. Oh, not very well don't worry we'll cover it up with something else no problem You know, there are no mistakes, just opportunities. I think that looks pretty good. You can barely even see where I um, stamped the edge. All right, so I think it needs a little something else. So we are going to add 
these, I don't know, eucalyptus, berries, leaves, whatever it is, out of the forever greetings. Okay, so let's add a few of these. Where there's a little white area, like right there, we're going to add one of those. Okay, where there's another white area over there, we're going to add one of those. Okay, right down here, coming in from the outside edge. Right here, I think it needs some color. And then right along here, it needs some color. Yeah, right in here, it needs some color too. Okay. It, now it's just what you think. And let's put one right in the middle of those flowers. I think that looks pretty cool. It's just what you think it needs. This is a very um, open sort of way of doing things so that if you think you have enough, that's when you stop. If you think it needs more, you can keep on going. It's just so much fun. What do you think, Joan? Do we need any more? She Maybe has a something in right in okay. She has a slightly different vantage point, so we'll go with what she says. She says we need one right down here. I think she's right. Okay. All right. I think we need one right in there now. So let's put this one coming over that way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Now. Now, you could stop here. This is perfectly good. I think it's absolutely beautiful as it is. There are other things that you can do to it, and I'll show you on mine that I did a little something else. But one of the fun things to do it is to kind of make it not so distinct, to make it sort of um, overall, and an overall pattern works good. One overall pattern that's really good to use is from the very Versailles group. Uh, very Versailles stamp set. This little font here is great background. This vine done in real light, a light color, is a great background. I'll show you some cards that have that on it, but we're just going to end it with dots. This dots are out of the um, Forever Fern one, and they are in Blackberry Bliss. And all I am doing is anywhere I see white, I am filling in with dots. Because I just think it makes it, I dare not use the word pop, but I do think that it makes it cohesive and come together somewhat. And just keep, luckily, you know, it's just dots, so you don't even have to worry that it might be turned the same way. Who can tell, right? They're just dots, a clump of dots. I'm trying not, you'll notice that I'm not putting it so much on the flowers because I like them like they are. They, I, I like showing off the distinctiveness of the flowers. What do you think, Joan? Should I put it a, more? Nope. nope, less is more. That's good? All right, that is our beautiful, beautiful One Sheet Wonder. Three. Okay, here we are back with our cutter. I'm going to show you how to cut it. All right, so we really only need, we really only need four by five and a quarter, not the usual whole card front. We want a small portion of a card front. So the first thing I do is I look at this edge and I decide if I like this edge or not. And I think, yeah, that edge is fine. So I'm going to cut it at five and a quarter, right down the center, right well, almost down the center, five and a quarter. Okay, and then I'm going to cut this piece. This edge is kind of blah, blah, whatever. So we cut part of it off. So I cut it at five and a quarter here. Okay, leaving a cool strip that I can use on the inside of the card if I need to. Then we turn it and I look at this side and I say, um, I could probably cut it off. So we're going to cut, turn it this way. I like this side a little better. And we're going to cut it at four okay so we have one card front right there then we cut this at four because this side is a little bit more boring and we have another strip for the inside of our card if we want to so now I pull this one over this side slightly boring so we're gonna put it on the cut off side so we put this at four And then we put this at four. 
Got a little strip left over if we need it. And we have four card fronts right here. Okay? Let me lay them out so you can see them. The only decision we have now is which way we like them. This one, I think, looks really good in landscape instead of portrait. This one, I think, looks fine in portrait. This one, I think it looks good in landscape also. And this one looks pretty good in portrait. So we basically have two portraits and two landscapes. Um, but, you know, that is a totally, totally individual decision. Sorry for the bounce. Let me show you the finished cards now. And I will show you slight differences on the finished cards. So, some, some, And I didn't like it as much, so I didn't do it on here. Okay? These are the finished cards. Okay? I used another stamp and stamped yellow. I'm not moving those yet because I want to show. I am stamped yellow in the center. I like it so much better without it. So I didn't do it. I also used the um, font in the background. I decided I liked it much better. So these, see, here's the font in the background. I left these off, okay? But all I did was to mount them on um, Blackberry Bliss cardstock. Now, you'll notice that there's a bigger border around this than this. Well, that's because I cut it wrong. I accidentally cut it at five instead of five and a quarter. So therefore, I just made the front of this one be three and three-fourths by five. Three and three-fourths by five, whereas these are four by five and a quarter. Just cut off a little bit. Now, you may notice the greetings. The greetings are out of the sets that we just used. Thank you kindly and... Oh, sorry. Thank you kindly and oh so happy for you are out of the de delicate dahlias. And this other one, to a friend that makes me smile, is out of our forever fern. You may also notice this shiny paper behind it. Well, let me tell you about that. That is also a free celebration um, item. It is called Be Dazzling Paper. There's only one problem. This looks kind of silvery, which didn't go. So what did I do? I took a piece of it and I spritzed it with alcohol and cherry cobbler. It made it just have a little bit more coppery tone or a little bit more fall tone or a little bit more reddish tone whatever you want to call it, which I think goes great. Then I just used my circle cutters. By the way, run it through several times because this is pretty hard to cut out, and then mounted my greetings on that. Then, of course, we decorated the inside with just our stamps. You can see each one of the insides is decorated. Oh, yeah, and, and I didn't do anything different. I just put, turned the paper. That at the top looks just as is exactly the same as this and it looks fine okay and then our envelopes to match so how much fun is that Joan and I love this technique in fact we do it often and I have to show you some of the cards that we have created we have been on a Christmas roll lately and so we have been creating lots and lots of Christmas cards so here are a sample of our Christmas cards I only did half a piece of paper. I And this is not, notice this is not the stamp set we just used. This stamp set is positive thoughts. It's not a, you say, Carol, it's not a Christmas stamp. But you know what? It can be used as one. I also used the very Versailles, and I'll show you that. It's done in shaded spruce and and cherry cobbler and you can see that I just I didn't do one whole sheet I did half a sheet now you may say what is that gold on there Carol well it is also out of the very Versailles and let me tell you this is our beautiful gold flake you know what I did you know what I did Joan I spread a little bit of glue on one of our silicon pads stamped this with glue, put it on the paper, and then added the gold leaf to it. 
How easy is that? Don't even have to use your heat gun. This paper right here is our is in our annual catalog, and I don't remember the name gold of it. Gold and rose gold. Gold and rose gold foil paper. It is so pretty. It has a texture to it. All right. So, and the greetings were some we had left over, so I can't I can't tell you much about those. All right. This is our second example here. Same stamp set. Same stamp set. Okay. Positive Thoughts and Very Versailles, a half a sheet of it done in um, Mary Merlot and Evening Evergreen. Evening Evergreen. Thank you, Joan. This is out of the um, Elegant, Simply Elegant Punch, the punch that comes with the Simply Elegant. I just did the bottom part of it. Didn't do the top part of it. You can stick a little piece of paper in, do the bottom all right, and the, this part is done the same way, and it's out of the very Versailles right here. And you can see the font in the background. Aren't those pretty? I don't know which one I like the best. Let me show you another stamp set we have, okay? We made some Christmas cards with the Christmas season stamp set. Joan and I did kind of a contest, not a contest, but I don't know, a challenge. Competition. That's what we, competition, a challenge. I used... The large, um, I used the large pine cones and did it in brown. She used the smaller pine cones and did them in gray. And then we used different colors. Let me show you. These are my four done with the large pine cones. The background is birch. Okay, is birch. And then we have clusters of three pine cones. Now, I thought if you did... Pine cone, pine cone, and a pine cone sticking out that way. It looked a little too triangular. So I did pine cone, pine cone, and then tilted it a little bit so it's kind of like it's laying down or something. I, I felt better about that. So there's the there's the pine cones done in brown. The big pine cones done in brown with the background and all kinds of stuff. All right. Now let me show you Joan's set. Okay. Here's her set done with that. She did it on white. Whereas I did it on very vanilla. She did it on basic white. And she has the grays. And then the others. Here's our positive thoughts fern popping up again. I think it's positive thoughts. No, that was Daisy Lane, wasn't it? So, so we used different things. And she used the little berries. Here's this. She used the little berries and the branch here. How cute is that? Now, you don't have to do that. Let's say... We just wanted some masculine cards. Well, I left the red out and did a set of four. And I've got some masculine cards. But I have a confession about these. I goofed a little bit. Notice my pine cones are in the very center each time. So I'm going to have to just put something up here or down here because I can't put something over my beautiful pine cones. So these are just going to get greetings, basic strips or greetings on here. Don't do it in fours. That's my lesson to you. Don't do it in fours. Do it five. That'll put everything off a little bit. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed this technique. This is one of our favorites. We use it all the time with all different stamp sets. I hope you go home and try it with whatever stamp set you have. Just pull one out and, or pull two or three out and mix and match and come up with create something beautiful. Thanks for today. See you later. Bye. Bye.